Oof, it is another great day with great weather here in Sweden. And it sort of became, or it became this mandatory thing for me that as soon as sun is shining, I just gotta train outside. Today I am unfortunately training alone because I'm here a bit earlier. I'm going to celebrate my grandpa in the evening. So I had to train now during lunchtime, but that's fine. I'm used to training alone. And as, as long as I got some good music, it, it works. I did talk about a lot though when it comes to like finding your full potential when it comes to energy because I feel like we all have this we have a certain limit that we can use from our bodies when it comes to strength and energy and everything that in general but then we have these things that can just trigger or allow us to access this extra power that we all got I did mention before some like when kids for example are in an, an emergency the parents gain some sort of super strength and that just means that we are all capable of doing things we just can't really do and we have those limitations but if we can find things that allows us to then get access to this extra energy that is the key because then we're gonna you know just perform at a way higher level for me one of those things has been to train with other people it just keeps me fucking sharp you know when you're surrounded with people that all are training you get this hype, you get this dopamine, you, you want to fucking perform and that keeps me sharp. That's one of the things. The other thing now is with the weather, like the reason I'm training outside is, you know, it's just a vibe. Like I could have a shit today, but as soon as I go outside, get some sun, I train, it's just, I, I so much enjoy it that it gives me this extra energy and that keeps me, or I stay consistent because of it. Because every time the sun is shining, I'm like, fuck it, let's just do a workout. So I found those two things that works really well. Same with music. If I found music that I just fucking vibe to it, it also allows me to push those extra reps, hold it slightly longer. And that's one, all of these three things together, just increase my maximum potential. And trust me, every day I'm probably, or not every day, but every now and then I'm gonna find these things that allows me to gain more access to my full potential. And that's gonna be different for everyone. So what I really wanna try to say is, find those things and stick with them because they are gonna push you and allow you to gain maximum fucking potential. Either way, the structure for today. Now we're getting back to the actual <laughs> training vlog or training session. And that's gonna be front lever training. And the goals that I mentioned last session is two front lever pull-ups and the third one is gonna be a top hold. That's gonna be like the main goal of all of these workouts in general. So. Hopefully they will stack up, give me enough power to actually perform it. So we're starting off with front lever top hold. That's one of the key points. I'm weak in this. I'm really strong in the dynamics, but in the top hold, I lack some strength. So that's gonna be the number one thing I start off with. And then we're moving on to one arm front lever slightly. It's not my main goal right now to improve it, but I still wanna have it more comfortable than I have. So I'm having it in the beginning of the workout. Then normal front lever pull-ups. We're doing some front lever holds and then Victorian training. And that's gonna be sort of the schedule for today. Starting off strong with front lever top holds. I am using the thinner band. Front lever in general is my strongest side. So I've always been using slightly thinner bands in all the exercises compared to planche. Been slightly weaker there. Now they're sort of getting more equal since I trade them roughly the same. So they're all just going towards the same level. But this is the one I'm using. I think it's five to 15 kg. Pretty damn solid. I also would say this resistance band and the one that's one step above, those I would prefer to use when I train. If I'm using a resistance band that's thicker than the next step than this, so two steps more, I think at that point you should probably just cut down and do a easier progression. When I started with Victorian training, for example, it was, I was weak and I used a super thick resistance band, but I feel like it helps me too damn much that it's not really worth it. So at that point, I just did an easier progression with a thinner resistance band like this one or one step further as well is fine. But if you get too much help, you sort of just lose a lot of the connection and then it's not really the point. I feel like with resistance band, the point should be to just reduce your weight, but not the connection. That's what we, the whole thing is about. That's why we also have the resistance band by the hips, because we want to take away the weight in the middle, like the center of mass is right here. That's the balance point. So if we take away it here, we still need to have the connection everywhere. But if I put it in my feet, 
I'm reducing the overall weight, but I'm also taking away leverage from the feet. So at this point, I just take away connection from the core and sort of loses the point. So always having the resistance band here is something I learned and rather do a slightly easier progressions instead of taking like these massive bands. Now, pretty much max hold, front lever, top hold. Pretty good. I feel great connection like the first seconds I feel like damn, I could almost pull through the bar which is what we want but then clearly my endurance is sort of lacking because I can only hold it for slightly over five seconds I think with clean touch and then I sort of lose, lose that extra connection so training my endurance is definitely the, the thing I need to do now and that's why we're doing these increased sets and just focusing on top holds, normal holds and a little bit less of the actual dynamics. Let's get a form shake, almost exactly from the side, so we'll see if my feet are pointing straight up or if we are actually pretty flat. That's what we want, not straight up. And not pointing downwards either. Also something I recently learned is when it comes to top hold, you don't necessarily want to over retract. It's almost more, you want to be pretty tight and really tighten the core in this position. So not over extending like this. That's something I I didn't really think of when I started to train just top holds. I thought it was more like the normal front lever because in front lever, I, I, when I think about it, it's just like maximum pushing up the chest as much as possible. But when I'm actually doing top hold, it's more of keeping it more tight in, in this part. So sort of a twist that Christoph taught me. So it's most likely true. Ah, I think that's pretty damn good as well. I try to do the negative part as controlled as possible. In general, everything you can do negative, if you have that control, it's gonna give you a lot of strength for the actual movement as well. So now I have enough strength to do it control, so might just add it. Final set, the form looked pretty damn good to be honest in the last one. The body looked straight and uh, I will do the same for this one. Oh yeah, pretty damn noise. Let's move on to some one arm front lever action. Two sets on each arm, so one set on the right one, get some rest, and the left one, and then one more time. I will have the five to 15 kg resistance band for the right arm, since I'm way stronger, better connection, and for the left one, I will use the step thicker, so I think that's 10 to 30 kg, just so I get the form right. That's the most important thing. Even if I can hold it for a while, if it's more towards the L sit, it's not necessarily worth it. Oh. Time for one arm on the left one. Probably gonna be slightly harder even if I get more help, just because my body is less used to it. Even if I've done it a lot, like these skills, especially one arm, doesn't matter if it's one arm handstand or one arm front. It's just so much pressure for one arm to deal with the full body. Especially now since I'm just gaining weight all the fucking time. Last time I measured my weight I was 90 kg. That's too much. Now I'm starting to run even more. And the crazy part is that it's, it's mainly muscles, it's some fat as well, but a lot of strength as well. A lot of muscles as well so not only just bad weight which is crazy so I feel I feel stronger I feel energized but to some degree like I can't, can't weigh too much it's gonna be hard also for freestyle wise that 
the hands are gonna take more damage, it's gonna be harder to do the skills. Everything is just gonna be beneficial if I drop down slightly. So, including all the one arm front lever and one arm hands then. That was some good set, but now I'm glad we're going over to some dynamics or power dynamics. It's time for a front lever pull-ups. This time I also have the 5 to 15 kg band, slightly less help. I'm only gonna rep it out now, so I'm not gonna do stop at any position, just of course full lockout and full top hold or full touch, but I'm not gonna stay here for like one second. Only mark it, go down, mark it, go down. Rep it out. Last time I managed to do five in a row, pretty alright form. But then I had to take a rest and do the three last ones to get up to eight. I'm thinking let's try to do eight reps in a row for the first set and just see how the body feels today. Maybe I make it. Nope. We need an in-between pause as well. That's heavy, I feel a lot in the tricep. Might be from the one arm hold. For some reason it's a lot of tension, so I, I do feel the tricep when I do it. Even if it's you know, not necessarily tricep exercise, but the connection is there. I was gonna put some more sand under the straight bar because now I put it on sort of a hill. Maybe we just need a drop. Whoop. <laughs> this final lockout makes it so damn hard. If I just wrap out from here, way easier but we want the full range oh, fucking hell it's crazy like as soon as you go out to full lockout to pull from there it just stops all the momentum and makes it extremely hard but at the same time in competition you're always gonna start from lockout Otherwise you ain't gonna get your points. So I'm just gonna continue to train like this with lockout, but of course makes it harder. I also wanna say that if you're wondering how you should use the resistance band when you train plunge press, when you're training front lever pull-ups, front lever races, when you're just training with normal plunge, I have done some more explaining videos of how you can actually fasten the resistance band on the body, on the bar, if you only have access to a straight bar as well. All of this is gonna be in the community, so if you're struggling with how you should use the bands or how you should change the intensity depending on which level you are, make sure to join us. We are a big crew, we've gained over 25 people now and it's just really nice to see us grow. I also jumped off my freaking studies, it's done in two weeks and after that YouTube community, it's gonna be just full time. So if you're early on here, you're gonna get access to literally everything and be on me on this journey. I will make you, I will make sure that you get them fucking gains. We're gonna get huge! It's time for the last set of front lever pull-ups. Let's end this exercise on top. Ah. You want to be explosive in this. If you're doing it slow, it's a lot of time and attention that's hard. Oh. 
Fuck. Oof. Wow. I'm definitely gonna feel the body after one or two weeks with this training because I'm going to failure now. Like everything I'm doing, it's can't do any more reps. It's gonna be tough, but I will have some deloads. I also might add some rest day extra if I feel like my body needs it. Sort of adapt depending on how I feel. It would be good. We're gonna get them gains. It's time for two sets of just normal front lever holds. No resistance band, no progressions, just normal front lever hold. This is to prove that I still have it. And also, of course, to improve it. Because in front lever, when I'm doing pull-ups, if I'm super comfortable in the front lever position, almost like it's in a resting position, it's gonna be way easier for me to actually pull. Then if I'm struggling already here, it's gonna be rough to do these pull movements as well. So I'm thinking it's a good way for me to add it. It's gonna be beneficial to gain strength. And also, since I can do the front lever without resistance band more than eight, more than eight seconds, I will do it without resistance band. Because at this point, I'm still gonna be training both connection, I will have pretty high time and attention, and we're gonna get some strength. And I get to prove that I can do skills without resistance band, even if I freaking love those. Let's get it. I'm aiming for 10 seconds. If we can do more, that'd be great. If I can't do 10, as long as it's more than eight, still pretty good. Oh, Oof. Oof. Not my longest hold, but it was something. Especially now since we're doing in the end of the workout, it's, it's kind of harsh. But that's also good, because in competition, I'm most likely just gonna do the normal front in the end, so I might just get used to being tired. <laughs> ah. I dropped the hips slightly towards the end, but in the beginning, I think the form was all right. Final thing for today is gonna be Victorian races. I did them last post session as well. They are pretty damn nice. If you do them controlled, slow, they're extremely beneficial as well for getting into the position and you know how the Victorian should feel. We're not doing any holds, but just entering it the right way. And the slower we can do it, the better it is. I'm aiming for 10 reps, two sets. freaking underrated it is extremely harsh especially when you get in control and not slipping with the arms it kills you It is harsh. It's crazy. It's more, it's endurance, but also super heavy at the same time. Because you're tightening the whole body so you don't lose the connection. Maintaining that throughout the whole movement. And the top here fucking kills you. So I'm glad we only touch it, then go back. But that was the last exercise. Feels good. I am actually pretty, pretty done in the body. Good thing we don't have anything more. Except for some light flexing, of course. We have some, some more light today, so maybe I actually look a bit more buffed than last time. I don't know if this is a flex. Probably just gonna look like I'm mad or something, but we can give it a try. Ah. 
if I look in the camera, it looks so weird. Uh, either way, we have it on camera, so it's something. Stop! Not necessarily too much tricep today, but like I said, I did feel it a lot in the front lever, so some slight pump. Some back shots. So it's like no matter how I flex, it feels like my face is just fucking ugly, you know? You're squeezing, you have the blood, and then I'm gonna stare right into you, you guys, and it feels awkward, but either way, it gets more and more, I think it gets better every time, and less awkward, because I do actually get used to it. As long as I didn't get cramps, I am taking my, my magnesium and my water intake is also pretty high, so it should reduce the chance of me getting cramps. Because if I don't get it during training, that's number f one thing. If I get it while flexing, it's fine, but preferably I don't want it at all. That's the like, end goal. Either way, tomorrow it is time for some planche workout again, or specifically Maltese. It's gonna be a main focus, and also some planche push-ups, some uh, normal planche. We have some more things on the schedule as well. We are going to add weighted dips tomorrow as well, because I just freaking love dips. So, a totally different workout, so make sure to hit like, subscribe, and I will see you guys then. Choo-choo!